So Unity 2019.1 was announced last week and it was released in beta and now two of the new features are the shortcut manager and scene visibility that are also available now. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how both scene visibility and shortcut manager work and also work in combination, so hand in hand, because they do, apparently. <laughs> and before we get started with the video, I just wanna quickly mention that this video is brought to you by Simmer.io. Simmer.io is a website where you can upload your Unity games. It's incredibly easy to use as you can register on the website and deploy your game as a WebGL game in Unity. Then you just have to drag and drop the WebGL folder Folder into Simmer and that is literally it. Something else I stand behind with Simmer personally is how they support deploying your game onto other platforms too. So you can focus your time on making the best game possible instead of focusing on deploying to the web. Because once your game is on Simmer, embedding on another site is a simple copy paste. Simmer is also a very fast platform, so no matter where in the world your players are located, they won't suffer from long loading times. Using Simmer is also completely free and the creator Rocco wants to enable monetization for you to monetize your work and get paid for it. We also have an affiliate link set up with Simmer so by going to the link in the description of this video or simply to the one on screen right now which is simmer.io forward slash Saiku you can join Simmer and start posting your games right now. Also first 20 people to register with the link in the description will get access to a four hour long Udemy course valued at $119 which is for mastering Unity and WebGL. So thank you so much Simmer for sponsoring this video. And now with that being said, let's get into Unity. All right, so here we are in Unity 2019.1 and we have a scene open, which is a kitchen from the ArcVis Pro package, which is going to be linked in the description, not sponsored by the way. This is just a pack that works in Unity 2019.1. So I thought we could as well just use it. So we're gonna get started by taking a look at scene visibility and we're gonna do a tutorial on it. And then we'll continue by taking a look at the shortcut manager and also how you can use the shortcut manager to set up shortcuts for scene visibility along with any other tool or feature in Unity. So if you don't know yet, the scene visibility tool enables you the option to turn any game object in your game invisible just for the scene view and still maintain its visibility in the game view. So say if we had like 20 of these total houses, right? If we had 20 of these, then the game could be a little bit lagging, especially if we, we had a bunch of high quality models in here. And because Unity would be rendering all of them so that you can see them, it would pretty much make Unity lag even just a little bit. So in order to improve the performance when you're editing and you know doing anything in Unity at all, they have added this option. So to use the scene visibility tool, first and foremost, we need to make sure that this tool right here, this guy in the scene view is enabled. So this guy right here is gonna show us the number of hidden objects. So here you can see that there is a little zero beside a eye icon. And if we click it, it's going to disable scene visibility, which means that even if we make anything invisible now, it's not gonna be visible. So just make sure this is like this. So let us say for instance, we wanna make this table right here invisible because it's really draining Unity right now. So all we have to do is instead of disabling the entire game object, which is also going to disable it inside of our game view, we can simply use this new gray bar that they have added in the hierarchy window. So you can see that if I hover over the table itself in the hierarchy, we have this eye icon similar or even same with the one that is in the scene view. So if I click it, it's going to turn that game object invisible. And if I switch over to the game view, you can see that it's still there. And now if we go back to scene view, you can also see that the number of objects that are hidden right now has been updated to be one. And you can make the table appear again by simply hitting the eye icon once again, or you can simply use undo and redo because it does support those shortcuts. But let us say, for instance, we want to disable the entire kitchen game object, which contains all of these kitchen game objects like the table, the chairs, the bench, you know, everything that is is related to the kitchen. And so if we do that by simply just hitting the eye icon, you can see that nothing turns invisible. And that is because the default way this tool works is that if you just hit the eye icon, it's only going to make sure that the, the single game object you pick is invisible. So we need to tell Unity that we're trying to make the game object and all of its children game object, basically meaning the table, bench, and all that kind of stuff, invisible with the kitchen itself. 
So we can simply just hold down Alt or Alternative and press the eye icon once again for the kitchen and you can see that all of the kitchen related game objects and props have been invisible now or have gone invisible <laughs> English 101 and you can also re visible <laughs> I don't know what to call it you can make them visible once again by holding down alt and pressing the eye icon once again pretty cool right so this is very useful once again because it's going to help you improve your performance and to make your workflow easier and faster unity also added the feature short manager. I'm sure you know the premise and what it's supposed to be so I'm just gonna jump into it and show you guys how to use it. So to open up the shortcut manager you need to go to edit and then all the way down here you can see a new option called shortcuts. So this is the shortcuts window, the manager window and you can see a visual representation of your keyboard right now. In this visual image here you can see all of the keys that have a shortcut assigned right now. So if you hold our mouse over the space key it kind of disappears really fast but okay so it's set to animation play animation and timeline play so <laughs> it just disappears too fast I don't know why but you can also right click on it and see all of the commands that it's assigned to and you can also fold out a new window which enables you the option to remove the shortcut and you can also press shift which basically means you're holding down shift and you press one of these keys and something's gonna happen and you can do multiple combinations so you can say I'm gonna hold down shift and control and alt and do something which is not set to anything at all. Wow, I'm disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, you can do some really cool stuff with this and you can see all of the shortcuts you have right now. And moving down here, you have the categories field. So in the categories field, you can see that we have all Unity commands. So a bunch, a huge list of a bunch of commands, which is insane. But luckily enough, you can also use the search tool that they have added. So you can say like, terrain, right? If you're looking for something related to terrain, you can see everything that is related to it in here. Or if you're not sure about what actually you're looking for, you can simply use the category. So in here we have the terrain category. So here you can see we have a detail brush, the tree brush and previous brush and all that kind of stuff. But for us right now, the most important thing here is scene visibility. So in this category, you can find five different types of commands, which are all things you can do in the Unity engine itself. So you can see that we have two commands at the top named toggle visibility and the other one toggle visibility and children. So toggle visibility is for doing just this, right? Toggling the visibility for one single game object. Whereas toggle visibility and children is for whenever you hold down alt and press the visibility key, which is going to make everything invisible that is related to this game object right here. So let us go ahead and set up two shortcuts for these two guys right here. So first and foremost, for toggle visibility, if you wanna add a new shortcut, you can simply double click underneath shortcut here, and it's going to enable this text field. And in here, I can press, for instance, say B, and it's going to now say binding conflict. So a window pops up saying, the key B is already assigned to the terrain slash tree brush shortcut. Do you want to reassign this key? So this pops up because we already have a command set for the shortcut B. So we can pick to reassign, which means that we're going to nullify the tree brush shortcut. So B is no longer going to be active for that but it's going to be active for toggle visibility. Or we can pick to create conflict, which basically means every time we press B on our keyboard, a window similar to this one is going to pop up saying, hey, what are you trying to do right now? Because I see you have two different commands for this shortcut. And you can also cancel and go back to picking a new shortcut. But for me, I'm going to reassign because I'm not really using the brush tool by using B anyway, so let me reassign. And now for toggle visibility, I'm going to double click here once again, and for this one I'm going to say I'm gonna hold down control and press B to do this and you can see that control B is already assigned to build and run options so this command is going to be I can either reassign or cancel and let me reassign this one too so now if I pick one of these game objects like let's say the table right for instance I can press B and you can see that it's going to toggle visibility and I can also highlight the kitchen game object and hold down control and press B, which is going to toggle visibility for all of the children game object for kitchen, including kitchen itself. 
pretty neat, right? And one more feature I want to show you guys before ending this video is the fact that you can create profiles. So if I press here, you can see that we have three different profiles right now. One called level design, which is something that I created, a user profile and a default profile. So if I say switch back to default, you can see that we no longer have these shortcuts set. And if I search for build and pick to search from all Unity commands, you can see that control B is still set to be build and run in here. So basically a profile is literally a shortcut profile that you set up where you're like, okay, so I'm gonna have a level designing profile, which is going to be, which is going to contain a set of shortcuts that are going to be level design specific. So for level design, I could go for terrain and maybe say, well, I'm gonna use the tree brush a lot. So let me set this to be C, right? And then when I'm done level designing, I can simply just switch back to the default profile and this setting is no longer going to apply. And this is really cool because this means you're not gonna lose any of your settings. And if you wanna create a new profile, you can click here up at the top left corner and pick to create new profile. And you can rename this so I could say a level design only if I could spell <laughs> level design but it's not going to enable me to create one more because I already have something called level design so I could say level designing and then create and boom now we're in level designing profile all right so that should give you an overview of how the new scene visibility tool and the shortcut manager in unity 2019.1 work I also like the fact that they work hand in hand because they came at a very perfect timing actually um, and you know I, I feel like it's going to be really easy to make level designs now because I can just create a new profile of a brand new set of shortcuts instead of using the regular ones by Unity and then just make my level design since I wish to. It's really good. But my opinion doesn't matter. Of course, I'm just a YouTuber. So I want to hear your opinion. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about these two features. I really think they're cool, but <laughs> once again, my opinion doesn't matter. Not biased at all, but let me know. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give it a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button below the video to stay up to tune for new content. Content. Also, finally, I can say that you should join our Discord server with over 10,000 members. That's right, we just hit 10,000 members for a few days ago. <laughs> Good thing I don't remember the day we hit it. Yeah, of course. No, but it's been a few days and um, I'm still really excited. I can't believe that we actually hit these numbers. Like it's been milestone after milestone and it's crazy. So I wanna thank you guys for being a part of the community and interacting with us in any way possible. And for those of you who haven't joined yet, join and I'll buy you a cookie. And I would also like to give a huge shout out to our Patreons who have been so supportive so far. So I wanna say thank you to Richard Stance, Cupola, Blue Joey, Beard or Die, MakeAGame.com, Couch Ferret, Gilherma, Leandro, I heard that I pronounced that name wrong, I'm sorry, <laughs> AcademyOfGames.com, and Terrorift.com. So thank you guys so much for your support. Now with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed your time. I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server, so I hope to see you guys there. If you want to join, link is in the description or Discord.gg forward slash PolyRealm. So with that being said, see you guys there. Have a good night and peace out. And if you enjoyed this video and cut cut. If you guys enjoyed this video, cut cut. If you enjoyed this video, cut cut. <laughs>